morning, everyone. And a very warm welcome to you all as we gather here for worship to, here together today. And we're going to begin on the screen by singing the hymn, Morning Has Broken. If you're using your hymn books, can you please turn to 467. And we turn in our service booklets to the first page, page two. And we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. And keep you in the love of God. And please sit or kneel to pray. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. And we stand to say the Gloria together. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us prepare ourselves for the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. The collect and the readings for Trinity 5 can be found on the front of your pew sheets. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first ring taken from a book of wisdom. Because God did not make death, he does not delight in the death of the living. For he created all things so that they might exist. The generative forces of the world are wholesome, and there is no poison in them. And the dominion of Hades is not on earth, for righteousness is immortal. For God created us for incorruption and made us in the image of his own eternity. But through the de devil's envy, death entered the world and those who belong to his company experience it. Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord. I will give thanks to you forever. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol restored me to life among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faith, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favour is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for, linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favour, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing and have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. I will extol you, O Lord. I will give thanks to you forever. And the second reading is taken from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by your poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who did not have too much, and the one who, did not, who had little, did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. 
Ask me to go. Our next hymn is Fight for Good Fight with All Thy Might. On the screen and 143 if you're using your book. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhaging stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone far from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leaders of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion of people wailing and weeping. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping and they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him 
and went into where the child was. He took the little girl by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I preach in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thirty years has gone incredibly quickly, but when I look around, I can see past, where past members used to sit who are no longer with us. So this morning, there is a tinge of sadness. Some of you may remember when I was here um, 30 years ago on my placement towards the end of my training. Well, Bill Harrison will never forget because I won't let him. <laughs> <laughs> but I was very grateful for his support. One of the tasks during the placement was to preach our first public sermon, which I did in Connors Key. I'd spent the previous week preparing for that sermon, but I was so nervous I couldn't string a sentence together. My brain just seemed to close down. Every time I picked up my pen, I put it down again and thought, I'll have another cup of coffee. In the end, I said, God, you called me to do this. Help me out here. And he did. I left the house that Sunday with the sermon intact. But I was still no nervous wreck and wondering if I might lose the, the power of speech when I got in the pulpit. I had to stop at the traffic lights at St. Etherwalls, and the lights were on there. So I looked across and I thought, I wonder what God would say to me if I could hear him. And then I thought he'd say, it's not about you, dear, it's about me. Don't let me down. I have no idea what I preached about, and I don't suppose anybody who was, was here would remember either. But I was told a certain Mr. McCaskill, whom you might have known, was quite impressed. And years later, when I got to know Magnus, I realized that that was praise indeed. He, was always, he always spoke his mind, did Magnus, and he is no longer with us now and is greatly missed, I'm sure. But I suspect he's still speaking his mind. Now I have quite a few sermons under my belt. I'm st still just, just as nervous, but I think that goes with the job, doesn't it? <laughs> I was ordained deacon in 1994, but it would be another three years before women were allowed into the priesthood, and that was a very joyful day and another lovely story. I looked up this reading that Alex had sent me for today, the gospel reading. And in my, one of my Bibles, the one I picked up was the New International Version. And when I looked at the passage, there was a heading at the top which said, a dead child and a sick woman. So I thought, well, there's nothing joyful in that really, is there? Some valuable advice we were given in training was don't let any words come out of your mouth until they have first been dipped into your heart. Don't let any words come out of your mouth until they have first been dipped into your heart. In other words, your words must be heartfelt. They must be what you truly believe, something I've always strived to do. Because I believe a sermon is not only about preaching the gospel, and it's certainly not about telling people what to believe, but it's a sharing, sharing your own faith and how the gospel reflects it. The passage today is about a dead, woman, a dead child and a sick woman, which turned out well for both of them. 
But as well as two miracles, it is primarily about faith. The woman had faith, and Jairus was a bit doubtful. The woman had heard about Jesus and was at her wit's end. After 12 years of sickness, no amount of money could, could cure her. But she believed that Jesus could. And when she heard he was in the vicinity, she went to find him. I think she would have been very disappointed when she saw how many people were there, the vast crowd that had gathered. But she believed if she could just get near enough to touch the hem of his cloak, she would be healed. And fighting her way through the crowd, that's all she could manage to do. She wasn't expecting what happened next, though, I don't think. Jesus stopped and wanted to know who had touched him. His disciples must have thought, what's he talking about? Is he mad? Look at all the people around him, and, and he asks who touched him. But the moment that woman touched him, Jesus felt his healing power leave him for her. He turned around and searched the crowd. The woman was probably trying to leave at that point, but everything came to a standstill. A very nervous woman stepped forward and owned up to Jesus and thanked him. But Jesus tells her it is her faith that has made her better. In sharp contrast, Jairus had come asking and believing that Jesus could heal his daughter. But when his friends came to tell him the sad news, Jesus was told, it's too late now, don't bother. So Jairus doubted that Jesus had the power and he had to be told to have faith. You could say that that woman only turned to Jesus as a last resort and tried everything else and this was her last hope. But how many of us struggle on through traumas and problems until we find it too much to bear and turn to prayer as a last resort because we're desperate. Now we don't have to get down on our knees to pray, thank goodness. And we don't have to say fine words. A quiet plea for help is all it takes. God might not take the problem away, he probably won't. But he will give us the strength we thought we never had to get through. We just have to have faith. Our faith is expressed in different ways. We have religious faith, blind faith, which is not, which a bit dangerous, and we have, we can express our faith in the community, and we have personal faith. People often say to me, you're religious, what does this or that mean? And I'm sure, like Alex, I've been in quizzes <laughs> where all the eyes turn to me when there's, a t uh, uh, when there's a question about the Bible. And nine out of ten, I don't know the answer. Well, the Bible is a big book. Yes, if, oh, yet all of us here are religious, if being religious means following a particular religion, which could be Buddhist, Muslim, Hindu, any of the many world religions. We follow the Christian religion in accordance with the Anglican Church in Wales. But even in the Christian faith, there are many branches, denominations, as far, a far cry from the simple religion of 2,000 years ago. There's Roman Catholic and nonconformists, such as Methodists, Presbyterians, and Baptisms. Over the past decades, Katine has worked hard to get us all together, while at the same time keeping our in individual integrity. The church in Wales, in the church in Wales, we're fortunate enough to be able to embrace all forms of worship for different tastes, but expressing the same faith. We have what we call high church, 
Now, I love a high mass with copes and incense and candles and bells, but I can also get carried away in an evangelical service and I can clap my hands and wave my arms as much as anybody else, if I can keep my balance, that is. And I like a simple said service. And one of my precious times is on a Wednesday morning at St. David's, especially when Stephen plays the spiritual hymns. All this is being religious, expressing our faith in different ways, our Christian faith. But even coming together in Katine, there's still a germ of an idea that our way is the right one, really. This was brought home to me years ago when I was thrilled to be asked to be a godparent to my niece in Canada. But the Roman Catholic priest was not so pleased, unfortunately, because I was being ordained. I was training to be ordained as a deacon. I was not, I was, the, I was in the Anglican church and worst of all, I was a woman. So as soon as I arrived, and I was jet lagged, he came to see me and told me he was disappointed that I was not of the faith, as he put it. I asked him, do you mean the Christian faith? Because if you do, I most certainly am. But I don't think he was impressed by that. So there is a danger that religious denomination and its rituals can be confused with faith. When it comes to blind set faith, that's leave everything to God. There's no, nothing we, we need to do. God will look after him. It, we're treading on very dangerous waters if we do that. And you might have heard this, but the man, in, the man whose street was flooded found out that it is a dangerous thing to have blind faith. A boat came to take people to safety, but the man said, no, I'll, I'll trust in God. He'll help me. He moved upstairs when the ground floor was, was uh, flooded, and the boat came back and tapped on his bedroom window. Off, oh, no, off you go. I'm fine. I'll, I'll, God will save me. I don't need you. And the same when he sat on his roof. And a helicopter that had come to help lift him to save, to save him was sent away. Of course, he drowned. But he approached those pearly gates in a fury. He asked St. Peter, why didn't he save me? And St. Peter said, well, he did send two boats and a helicopter. What more do you want? On a more serious note, though, when it comes to expressing faith in the community, we need to remember the words of St. James. In his epistle, he says, what good are words without deeds? Meaning we can be as pious as a saint. We can go to church as many times as we like. We can read the Bible from cover to cover. And that, in other words, we can talk the talk, but we need to walk the walk as well. Our faith demands action. Jesus told us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, befriend the prisoner, and house the homeless. That's a very big ask, especially these days, but it needn't be. A tin of soup, a packet of tea, a jar of jam for the food bank is helping to feed the hungry. Sorting out unwanted clothes for the Salvation Army is helping to clothe the naked. A visit, a phone call, a card in the post to the housebound who are prisoners in their own home, or bringing people together who live alone for a meal, or a game or two of bingo and a cup of tea and a cake. They're prisoners in their own homes and we're befriending them. And a donation to charity for the homeless, all these things are what Jesus asks us we might think our efforts are just a drop in the ocean, but every ocean is made up of tiny drops. And finally, I'd like to mention our personal faith, the faith between 
individuals and God, between you and God, between me and God. It's practiced through prayer and meditation. And for us Christians, it's a personal relationship with Jesus. Now, I was in one church where I heard some, and it wasn't in this parish, by the way, <laughs> where I once heard a, a, a churchgoer say, the people in this church are spiritually dead. Now, that was an outrageous remark. Who was she to judge a personal's faith? Personal faith is not shouted from the rooftops. It's a private conversation with a loving, caring Jesus who we can turn to in our sadness, grief, pain, anxiety, and loneliness. He understands because he suffered all those things himself when he lived among us. He had compassion and was sad to see people wandering around like lost sheep without a shepherd. And he cried at the death of his friend Lazarus. He worried about his mother, even when he was dying alone on that cross, suffering more pain than we would ever know. God knows our thoughts and is never far away, and he understands. When we sit in silence, if we can't or don't want to pray, we don't need to know the words. I love the luxury of silence, a silence retreat, and I'm not going to look at Alice's face. <laughs> I love the thought of eight days without uh, speaking to anybody and just having us uh, eight days of silence. But Alex has told us many times it's not her cup of tea. <laughs> but we're all different. And the beauty, that's the beauty of expressing our faith whether it's in the congregation or in the community, in silence, or all three. I was also told in my training, don't go on and on. If you haven't struck gold in 10 minutes, stop boring. And I think I might have run over. So I'll finish with something from Psalm 139. It's adapted to be more inclusive something for you to take away with you. Let us pray. Lord, you search us and you know us. You know when we sit and when we rise. You perceive our thoughts from afar. You are familiar with all our ways. Search us, Lord, and know our hearts. Test us and know our anxious thoughts. Amen. And now let us stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page five. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. We are Christ's brothers and sisters, called by Christ into fullness of life. We bring before him our prayers for all whose lives are restricted or confined. Amen. 
living God, you raised Jairus' daughter from the clutches of death. Fill your church with new life to proclaim your wonders. Remove the fear that blocks trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, we pray for our church and that it may be a beacon of light shining in our world, pointing the way of, to the fullness of life to be found in Jesus Christ. Strengthen Gregory, our bishop, our archdeacon Haley, and Reverend Alex, our priest, and missionary leader, and all your church in the service of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Creator God, we know that there are part, we are a part of the problems that the world face, and we know that wherever there is disagreements between people, there will be tension. We pray that those who lead us and any other nations of the world will always try to solve issues in a peaceful way and intervene in the world's conflicts with forethought and common sense. We continue to pray for the troubles in the Holy Land and in the Ukraine, and we commend the people there to your love. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, the leader Jairus begged for your help. Be with all who carry the burden of government. Turn our longing into zeal for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for all who are in pain or are suffering at this time. We remember especially those who are facing long or incurable illnesses. In a moment of quietness, we pray for Joan Carden, Glenis Cook, Emily Moore, Marjorie Jones, Barbara Williams, Paul Wiley, and Alan Salisbury. We ask God to comfort and to relieve them in their need, give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful God, you stretched out your hand and restored the little girl to life. Hear the cries of all who mourn and long for what cannot be. Turn our wailing into dancing at the promise of your resurrection. And we remember all those who have died. And here we remember Daryl Ward and Anne Della Griffiths. We entrust them to your gracious keeping in the faith of Christ. And we give you praise for all your faithful ones with whom we rejoice in the communion of saints. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, in the beauty and sanctity of this holy place, we offer our own faults and shortcomings our own prayers and petitions and bring them before God. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus calls us to freedom from bondage. With confidence and trust in his power and love, we commit our prayers to our loving Heavenly Father, saying together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. 
and we join in the words of the prayer of humble access together. And this morning we pray the second prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you draw and welcome us, emptied of pride and hungry for your grace, to this your kingdom's feast. Nowhere can we find the food for which our souls cry out, but here, Lord, at your table. Invigorate and encourage us, good Lord, that in and through this bread and wine, your love may meet us and your life complete us in the power and glory of your kingdom. Amen. Now, you may notice we didn't do the notices before the service this morning. Apologies for that. I had a few problems with the laptop. Fortunately, God was with it and it got back working. But first of all, I'd like to say a very happy birthday this morning to Brenda. We know how much Brenda does for the church and I hope she has a wonderful birthday. And Alex, can we say a short prayer yeah. for Brenda? Happy birthday, Brenda. Next Saturday, we are having a garage sale at the Vicarage with Alex moving out at the end of July. She is having a big clear out. How much of that will be George's? I'm not selling George off though. George is not for sale. But it will start at 10 and carry on until 1, and any help on the tables will be gratefully accepted. On Wednesday, the 17th of July, we, the Ladies Fellowship Group are putting on a cream tea for church funds. That will be at the parish centre at 2 pm. Uh, that will be £5 a person, and there will be Delicious scones and cuppers provided. The gift aid day will be the Sunday before, Sunday, July the 14th, and that will where we'll be giving on top of our usual offertory. There are gift aid envelopes at the back of churches soon. They're, they're there now. They're there now. Yeah, and you can give accordingly with a great many thanks for all your support in caring for your church life. With Alex leaving, we are looking for a couple of people to help and print and staple the parish magazines. If you can help, can you please let Julie Price or Alex know as soon as possible. A couple of advance notices now. Alex's final service in the mission area will be on Sunday the 28th of July and that will be at St Mark's at 11am. No other services will take place in the mission area this day so there will be no 9.30 service here. One final advance notice for you is the parish barbecue which will be taking place at Liz's house on Saturday the 3rd of August. I don't have a starting time for that yet, but it will be around 2 o'clock-ish. 2 o'clock, it is 2 o'clock. All will be welcome and prices will be announced closer to the time. And now would you please stand for the peace. quaked before moved by the sound of his voice seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard through it all through it all my eyes are on you through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is 
This mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea. And our offertory hymn is not what is published on your leaflets. We are singing Holy, Holy, Holy. And that is on the screen and hymn number 237 in Mission Praise. Holy, holy, holy.
It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right, wherever we are, to thank you and praise you, God our Father and King forever, through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him you made us and the whole universe. When your Holy Spirit came to Mary, Jesus was born as one of us. He loved us so much that he died for us. On the first Easter day, he raised us to life, and death and evil were conquered forever. At Pentecost, you gave the Holy Spirit as Jesus promised to help us to live as your children. So here on earth with the angels and archangels, and with everyone in heaven, we praise your name by saying together, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we sit for the remains of each of this prayer. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we venture in Jesus' name. To the Holy Spirit's power, gently. May this bread and wine be for us Jesus' body and blood. Father, you remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, he thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember. Together we remember that Jesus is always with us and say, Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. And so as our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our song 
years and then forever more bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy And our recessional hymn is, O God Beyond All Praising. 
If you're using Mission Praise, if you can turn to 1341, please. <laughs> 